Good morning, everyone. So good to be back uh, with your batch. And I really appreciate the fact that each one of you has pursued learning the word of God. And uh, now you are in your third year. And we are doing book studies. Uh, and I'm sure this is going to be uh, a very enriching experience for each of us. And I really hope that uh, this will be the beginning of uh, in-depth study. So whatever we learn in the third year, uh, let that be a foundation for continuous study of the books throughout, you know, no matter uh, uh, what you do after your uh, graduation. So uh, let's uh, pray, and uh, we will begin. I just want to request somebody from the batch here to lead in prayer. Yeah, anyone can please lead. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this uh, class that you have given us, Jesus. We thank you for this new academic year in our life, Lord. You brought us here, you called us, you chose us, and the God who has begun the good work continued it until today, Jesus, and you will do it until you come back. I give this whole class into your hands. I give all my classmates, I cover them in the blood of Jesus, and God, I declare your wisdom over each one of us here uh, right now, Lord. As we listen to the classes, help us to open our mind and heart. Uh, help us to open our spiritual eyes and spiritual ears so that we can understand the deepest truth in the Bible, Jesus. We thank you. We give Nancy Lam. We bless her with good health, with good knowledge and guidance. We give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jafina. Uh, let's begin with the book of Acts. As we start off, I just want to remind us that we will be studying from um, the Bible. So I am using the NKJV version of the Bible. So whenever we read, uh, you may find that that's the version that's being used in class. Uh, so you can refer to uh, the Bibles to read through the book. And in addition to this, we can use commentaries. The one that I uh, will be using uh, is the Blue Letter Bible from um, David Guzik. So Enduring Word is, is another uh, you know, website that he has. So Enduring Word, uh, Blue Letter Bibles, you could, you could use uh, both of these as well. Today, we will begin with an introduction to the book of Acts. Uh, so when we think about the book of Acts, uh, what comes to your mind? I'm sure uh, all of us have read the book uh, at least once. So what are the first few thoughts that come to our mind when we consider the book of Acts? OK, Holy Spirit. The day of Pentecost. The day of Pentecost. I remember <clears throat> it as a second volume of uh, St. Luke or of Luke the Physician. Okay. So the second volume of Luke the Physician, that's true. That's, yeah. Paul's transformation. Okay, St. Paul's transformation. Wow. Uh, each of these themes is so, um, you know, it, it seems like that is the theme of the book and you can write so much uh, about each one of them. That's great. Thank you, Rosalie. Uh, anything else that comes to your mind? Working on signs and wonders and growth of the church. Okay. Rapid growth of the church. Wow. Yeah, that, that's true also. So rapid growth of, growth of the church, uh, the manifestation of signs and wonders like never before. Uh, that, that, again, is something uh, wonderful that happens after the Gospels. Yes, all of these are unique. Anything else that you want to add to this list? The fulfillment of Jesus' promise and the 
all the activities of the early church. Uh, uh, Abu Bakr, could you come again, please? I couldn't hear you very well. Fulfillment of Jesus' promise on the days of Pentecost. Okay. Okay, so the fulfillment of uh, the promise of Jesus, which happened on the day of Pentecost. Yes. And anything uh, different from what has been listed out so far? Yeah, Angel, go ahead. Angelic intervention whenever was needed, like in case of Peter and uh, when he was in prison mm -hmm. and the church prayed, and then even in case of Paul and Silas. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, angelic intervention. That's nice. So uh, all these layers exist to the story that unfolds in the book of Acts. If we keep looking at the book of Acts, we can look at several other themes. We can look at how the gospel began to spread uh, from the Jews to the Gentiles to the ends of the earth. We can see how uh, lives of people were transformed. We can see the birth of the church. We can see the evolution of um, uh, church governance and structure uh, in the book of Acts. There's sort of an initiation of that. And then you know it, it begins to take shape uh, as you read the other epistles in the New Testament. We can understand how people faced persecution uh, you know, during the book of Acts. Uh, we've already listed out the mighty works of the Holy Spirit. So the, the working of signs, wonders, miracles. Uh, and when we study about the way the Holy Spirit worked, we can get uh, 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 we can get a good understanding of the prophetic as well uh, uh, or in other words how God speaks to his people and how he directed the steps of the people throughout the book of Acts so these are even though we've listed out quite a few uh, happenings and quite a few um, important uh, aspects of the book of Acts, you know, the list is not complete. We can keep going on. And uh, the book of Acts, uh, in, in many ways, is uh, it, it, it is very exciting. Okay? Uh, yes, all the other books of the Bible are exciting, but this is in, in a different way. It's almost like you're, you're watching a story unfold. You're watching the promises of Jesus unfold in the lives of the believers and the apostles. And uh, how that is just the beginning for what the world is going to see. Uh, you know, all that begins in the book of Acts. Now, let's look at a little bit of uh, the background of the book of Acts. So in this first session, that's what I'm going to deal with. Uh, and as I've already stated, I have not posted any notes for uh, this course. You can kindly refer to uh, the Bible itself, as well as some con commentaries. The one of the primary ones that uh, I, I will be using is the Enduring Word by David Cousy. So there are, if if we need to sum up what the Book of Acts is all about, uh, we could make one statement, and that statement is that the acts that are being talked about are the acts of the Holy Spirit through his people. So the book of Acts is about the acts of the Holy Spirit through God's people. The acts of the Holy Spirit, we would uh, see them manifesting through the ministry of the apostles as well as ordinary believers. And so many things take place in the book of Acts. So when we say acts, uh, acts of whom? Some places it says acts of the uh, apostles. So or we just say the book of Acts. Acts or the actions of the Holy Spirit through 
God's people is what uh, is captured in this book of Acts. So we see a lot of ministry happening. Uh, we see a lot of uh, um, uh, you know fulfillment of the promises that God has made in the Old Testament as well as the promises that Jesus made while he was ministering here on earth. So uh, ministry is taking place throughout the book of Acts. In a way, the book of Acts is a connector or the bridge between the Gospels and the Epistles. If we did not have the book of Acts, if we just had the Gospels, we would learn about the life of Jesus, his death, burial, resurrection. And suddenly, we would move on to um, the epistles, the letters written by Paul. We would move on to the letters written by other apostles. And a very significant portion of history uh, uh, among the early believers would would be missing because we wouldn't understand who this man Paul is. We wouldn't understand you know, what exactly happened uh, after the resurrection of Jesus. We wouldn't understand uh, who all these you know new people are. You you suddenly begin to see leaders like Timothy, Titus, Silas. Who are all these people? And we would also um, not understand how these believers started manifesting the power of God. And, uh, if you take, for example, the book of Corinthians, where Paul talks about the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit, we wouldn't have a clue how that happened suddenly after the resurrection of Jesus. So the book of Acts has a lot of content that gives us context for what is to come later. So as we read the epistles, we can connect to individuals and churches and uh, the the way things unfolded to the formation of those churches and you know who were the people involved what could have been certain issues in those churches so on and so forth and uh, we can sort of create a timeline and uh, look at the new testament uh, like a story even because you know you you have some context to all that is coming up later so between the epistles and the gospels the book of acts forms a bridge and it is really important for us to understand now when we look at the book of acts uh, we also see that uh, it was uh, the timeline when when uh, these happenings took place it happened somewhere around 33 ad that's when you uh, that those are the events that are recorded from 33 AD all the way till about 62 AD. Uh, the incidents are recorded within the Book of Acts. Now we may ask the question: Who wrote this book, the Book of Acts? Uh, any idea here? If uh, anyone wants to take a guess about who is the author of this book, Luke. Okay, that's true. Okay, you got it, uh, you know, uh, in your first guess. So Luke is the author of the book of Acts. And Luke is, every writer of the books of the Bible is quite unique. Uh, when we consider Luke, he is, a, you know, a, a very uh, special individual uh, for various reasons. One particular reason is that he was traveling with Paul when for you know some parts of uh, the incidents that are recorded in the book of Acts and um, Luke is also somebody who who knew the life of Jesus very well when you read a little bit more about Luke we get the picture that he was a physician he was a Gentile. He was a, a systematic, meticulous historian. Uh, he was also a Christian.
teacher. So he was a believer. Whatever he wrote in the book of Luke uh, and in the book of Acts leads us to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So we can see the perspective of Luke as he writes the book of Acts. Uh, whenever we read this book, you know, we uh, may appreciate you know, how systematically, how um, you know how detailed the, the content is and uh, how Luke has filtered out certain things that don't which are not required in the letter but you know, he, he's kind of um, given the story a focus so that is why I said it's it's almost like reading a story uh, you know unfolding so he's written it in a very beautiful way because he was a learned individual and he carried the skills to uh, tell a story. And the book of Acts was uh, addressed to uh, an individual called as Theophilus. Now, Theophilus, we will see his name in Acts chapter 1. Uh, it's likely that Theophilus was a God-fearing influencer. Theophilus could have been uh, in the government offices. And uh, uh, the, a possibility is that Luke wrote the book of Acts, as a defense letter for Paul. So when we start reading the book of Acts, we will see that it begins with the birth of the early church on the day of Pentecost. And as you go ahead, this personality Paul appears in the picture. Uh, he does a lot of ministry. But that's the season of persecution. So at some point, he is uh, taken away by the Roman authorities and he's being tried. When we come to you know, chapter 28, we'll notice that Paul is engaging in defending himself because the Roman authorities want to prove him guilty. So we will read the defense that Paul gives uh, people in various levels of governance. It's likely that Luke wanted to help Paul and to take up Paul's case. He has written elaborately about the birth of the church, but he's also written elaborately about Paul. The reason is he may have wanted to give this letter to the Roman authorities to prove that Paul was innocent, that Paul was not doing anything uh, you know, ungodly, or he was not doing anything against the law of the land. So the book of Acts, while it is meant to um, impart faith to the listener or the reader, it is a defense brief written by Luke. And that is why he wrote it to this man called Theophilus. I already told us that he would have been an influencer or he must have been a government official. So Luke was trying to get this letter to Theophilus uh, so that Paul somehow can be released and uh, you know that Paul might uh, uh, be let go and continue his ministry. So at the time, when um, Paul was undergoing his trial, uh, Nero is, is uh, the ruler at that time, and um, we will talk about this later. It was an incredible uh, time of persecution that believers had to face. So everyone was, was doing their best to serve God, doing their best to uh, love the community of believers around them. Now, I've already said that since Luke is the writer of the book, so he uh, is aware of the life of Jesus. We know that he wrote uh, his initial uh, piece of the book of Luke, where he talks about the life of Jesus. Now, the book of Acts, people say that uh, mostly Luke has written it in continuation. Okay, So he first wrote the book of Luke about the life of Jesus, and then he continued writing with the book of Acts. In some parts of the book of Acts, suddenly the language will change where Luke is also part of Paul's journey. So he would uh, make statements like, and we did this, we uh, went together. So there we can recognize that uh, Luke is also part of the journey. In other portions of the book of Acts, you will notice that he's just narrating 
from wherever he is. So he'll talk about the story uh, as a person who heard about it from someone. All right. Uh, now, the reason why we also say that this is a continuation is because when we start reading the book of uh, Acts, um, we will see that Luke will start with the life of Jesus. So he talks about the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus in his, uh, uh, you know, gospel letter, uh, in his gospel writing, and now. He begins in Acts chapter 1 by saying something like, uh, it's all about uh, all ab about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. So what's happening? After resurrection, you know, he'll talk about the ascension and then continue into the birth of the church. So it's a uh, continuation. Uh, that's the reason people say that you know, he wrote Luke first and then he just continued into writing the book of Acts. Uh, some people also say that it is the second volume. The first volume is Luke, uh, the book of Luke. The second volume is the book of Acts. Then when we look at the literal style in which the book of Acts was written, uh, it was written uh, in the Greek translation, oh, the Greek translation of the Old Testament was known uh, as the Septuagint. So in that same literal style, uh, the book of Acts has been written. So what are some of the uh, themes that you see in the book of Acts? We've already listed out quite a few. Now, let me let me uh, go repeat some of them again and go over a couple of new ones. Firstly, we see the work of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts. So primarily how the Holy Spirit was poured upon the people and uh, how the Holy Spirit worked through the people is what we see. Secondly, we would see that uh, initially some personalities are being spoken of more and then you have new uh, people you know appearing in, in the book of acts so initial focus is more on the 12 apostles uh, initial focus is more on peter who emerges as a leader and later on the focus is more on the ministry of apostle paul but one thing that we have to bear in mind is that the stories would overlap because you know it, it was during the same timeline that uh, all these personalities existed so even though uh, later on we will read more about paul it's not like peter was not continuing to serve the lord or or anything like that it's just that the uh, the focus has shifted to the life of paul okay, so the the events uh, the stories are all somewhere overlapping, connected, uh, and, and must not be looked at as separate. Then coming to the geographical outline, uh, the wonderful verse that we all talk about from the book of Acts is Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, where Jesus said, you shall receive power and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So notice there that there is a progression where God wanted to remind his people that the gospel is for the nations. It's not just for the Jews. It began with the Jews, but it was meant to go out into the world. So even in that statement, you can see how it moves out. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. We see that statement, and as the uh, uh, lives of people are being spoken of in the book of Acts, slowly we uh, start to see regions being named. So the day of Pentecost uh, and, and the uh, outpouring of the Spirit, the thriving church, all of that happened in Jerusalem. But later on, Acts chapter 8, you will find that there is a man, Philip, who will go and do ministry in Samaria. 
So remember, that's what Jesus said, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So Samaria is being spoken of over there. We, most of Peter's work happened in the region of Judea. Then later, you have cities uh, uh, such as Antioch being named. You know, uh, and, and later, you will see how Paul will want to go into um, Asia. He will want to go into Europe. Uh, and the region of Asia Minor is covered in the travels of Paul. So some of us may look at the book of Acts and say, hey, where is the ends of the earth? Jesus said, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. But all of this is unfolding within a region. But Acts chapter 28 sort of ends abruptly. Okay, So uh, uh, many theologians also say that the book has not really ended. Therefore, when Jesus said, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the ends of the earth, it's like the Holy Spirit is continuing his work through all of us. So the ends of the earth is happening. Whatever was possible during the time of the early church, those regions were covered. But God continues to uh, uh, show his glory to the ends of the earth. So in that sense, whatever Jesus promised is happening. Uh, it only began in the book of Acts, but it is happening right now. And that's one way of looking at it. We also see that the faith or the gospel moved from the Jews to the Gentiles. Peter, John, when we look at uh, all these apostles, many of them, they're Jews. And they thought that uh, whatever Jesus came to do was only for them. But we see how God was leading these apostles to take a step of faith and minister to other communities. Acts chapter 10 is a wonderful example where God sends Peter. He's so hesitant to go to the Gentiles, but God sends him to the house of Cornelius. And you see how beautifully Cornelius, his uh, family, his friends, they accept the gospel. And even the Holy Spirit is poured out upon them when they uh, receive and they believe and receive in what the Lord Jesus has done. So that is sort of the beginning of uh, God moving his leaders to minister to the Gentiles. And then we see that, you know, there was no uh, Jew or Gentile when Paul goes out to preach. He preaches first to the Jews. And when they are not receptive to the gospel message, he starts to even preach to the Gentiles. And primarily, you know, uh, God called Paul to the Gentiles. When Paul gives his defense, even at that time, we will see that he will talk to some uh, Jewish leaders, but he will also talk to some Gentile leaders. So there's no distinction. Uh, what God began to do is to take the gospel out to every community, every region. That is God's heart to uh, make the gospel available. The, the work, the redeeming work of the cross is for everyone. God so loved the world uh, that he gave his only begotten son. Right, So uh, what Jesus has done has to reach the entire world, and that starts to happen through uh, the ministry in the book of, through the leaders or the believers in the book of Acts. And Paul and his missionary journey, I already said how you know, Paul uh, travels through uh, Europe, Asia Minor, and uh, he ministers to Gentiles and Jews. So that is another theme that we can look at. When we to continue to study the book of Acts, uh, we would see many teachings as well, right? We, we would, we would uh, see uh, Peter standing up and preaching. We would uh, see uh, Paul ministering. Uh, and, uh, you know, Paul, in his defense, Paul talking about the gospel and the uh, work of the Lord Jesus Christ. So uh, in this manner, th there are many teachings as well that we can pick up from the book of Acts. Uh, 
uh, and in the book of Acts, there is a defense about the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Peter, John, Paul, they all will talk about how Jesus is the Messiah and connect back to scriptures in the Old Testament and, uh, you know, uh, state to the Jews or the listeners that whatever was prophesied is now coming to pass. So the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies uh, is also something that we see spoken of in the book of Acts. Uh, a few other themes that uh, we can understand from the book of Acts is also that there will be some thoughts about you know, what the kingdom of God is like. Right? Jesus talked about it in the Gospels, but uh, we, we see how the church is formed and the church belongs uh, to the kingdom of God and how uh, the church really begins to function. So that picture of what the kingdom of God looks like, uh, the glorious kingdom of God with power uh, manifesting with signs and wonders, we, we get a picture of that in the book of Acts. We also get a picture of the grace of God, how I said that uh, people from various communities are touched. Uh, you would find uh, that people who uh, are against God are saved by grace. Paul being a classic example. So the grace of God, we get a picture of the grace of God and how God really touches the lives of people. So all of these things are seen in the book of Acts. Uh, and if we just keep, you know, uh, talking about uh, very many things, we can say uh, we find personal transformation, stories of personal transformation here. We find uh, stories of, uh, you know, uh, the fire of God, the power of God, uh, the Holy Spirit. We find uh, so much spoken of about places, you know, different places, communities. Um, uh, and uh, of course, you know, a, a lot of focus on the life of Apostle Paul. So is there anything more that you may want to add from your knowledge to whatever has been shared so far? Okay, so uh, yeah, I think we've kind of covered almost everything that uh, needs to be covered uh, in the book of Acts. So we can start to read Acts chapter 1. So if you have your Bibles open, what we will do right now is we'll just go through Acts chapter 1. We can read the entire passage to begin with. And uh, when we come back after the break, we can start to explain what uh, the passage really means. So who would like to read Acts 1? The full chapter, ma'am. Yes. Acts chapter 1. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. 
After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120, and said, Brothers and sisters, the scripture had to be fulfilled in which the Holy Spirit spoke a long, long ago through David concerning Judas, who served as guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was one of our number and shared in our ministry. With the payment he received for his wickedness, Judas bought a field. There he fell headlong. His body burst open and all his intestines spilled out. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this, so they called that field in their language, Akel Dama, that is, field of blood. For, said Peter, it is written in the book of Psalms, May his place be deserted, let there be no one to dwell in it. And may another take his place of leadership. Therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus was living among us beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So they nominated two men, Joseph, called Barsabbas, also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over this apostolic ministry, which Judas left to go where he belongs. Then they cast lots, and the lot fell to Matthias. So he was added to the 11 apostles. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Rosalind. That was quite a long passage, but you know, you uh, went over that, so I really appreciate it. Uh, now, coming back to Acts chapter 1, uh, we've already, you know, talked about Theophilus here, whose name is mentioned. So uh, let's, you know, begin right there. We'll have to talk about him again, because uh, Luke starts with the introduction to the second uh, 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 edition or the second volume of his writing where he says the former account what is the former account we said that he had already written the book of luke so that's what it is the former account i made o theophilus theophilus being the ruler the believing ruler so theophilus uh, uh, the name is a greek name and theo is god phyllis is god loving so even in the name it shows that uh, he was probably a believer who loved god uh, and uh, luke was trying to get some help for paul so he found this believer a uh, ruler and, and he wanted to give the defense to him so that uh, in uh, some way paul could be uh, released and paul could be set free so he says oh theophilus uh, of all that jesus began both to do and teach so he's referring to the uh, book of luke where he's saying that 
he had covered the life of Jesus. Now notice, it says, Jesus began both to do and teach. So when we think about the ministry of the Lord Jesus, there are two aspects. One is the teaching aspect, but the other is the demonstration aspect, which we must not forget. We, when we study the life of Jesus, we want to imbibe the way he did ministry. So how did Jesus do ministry? Luke is saying what Jesus began both to do and teach. So there are teachings of Jesus. We refer to uh, you know, the Sermon on the Mount. We, we refer to all the parables. We refer to uh, the teaching on the kingdom of God. We refer to the teaching about uh, heaven and hell. So a lot of teaching is there in the life of Jesus. But when we look at the way he reached out to people in their situations and circumstances, there is a combination of both the teaching as well as the doing. So when we serve God today, uh, we must pray and say, Lord, help me to teach, but help me to also impact with the power of God. Help me to demonstrate uh, the, the works of the kingdom. So what are the works of the kingdom? We know all the good works of the kingdom where uh, life transformation happens through our ministry or healings take place, um, uh, uh, miracles take place in people's lives, breakthroughs happen. Uh, and in this manner, there are many things that happen in the lives of uh, people when Jesus was ministering. That's what... Uh, Luke is talking about. So how was the ministry of Jesus? The ministry of Jesus was what he both did and taught, what he began to do and to teach. And, and that is how we must also do our ministry. Okay, uh, let's continue from there. Now he says, until the day in which he was taken up. So he's talking about the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus, after he was resurrected, a few things will, will be uh, you know talked about it. And then he's very clearly pointing out that Jesus is now ascended into heaven. So when we read books like Hebrews, uh, you have a reference to the Lord Jesus and his current ministry as the high priest in the real tabernacle of heaven. So Jesus is seated up in heaven and he is at the right hand of the father what is his primary ministry now intercession or, or you know he is um, it's not so much that jesus is praying for us but it is more like he's already done his intercession on the cross by you know dying for our sins paying the price for our sins and setting us free and uh, he is representing that work of intercession up in heaven so we must remember this luke is pointing out where is jesus now where is jesus in the book of acts well jesus is not there in the book of acts because the person uh, of uh, jesus or the second person of the godhead the trinity now goes up into heaven and he will start talking about the we use the term, you know, third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, but it's not an hierarchy. It's not that, you know, the Father is first and Jesus is second, the Holy Spirit is third. It's not like that. But just to, uh, to uh, sort of denote uh, uh, the, the manner in which each one is talked about in the Word of God, we just say, you know, the Father, the second person, uh, the Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit, but they are co-equal. So Luke has given us a clear picture that... Jesus, the Son of God, now ascends up into heaven. So he says, until the day in which he was taken up, he makes it very, very clear about the ascension of the Lord Jesus. After he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen. So he's talking about the interaction of Jesus with the leaders, the uh, apostles, and all that he instructed them to do. So when Jesus was with the apostles or the disciples, at that point, you were calling them disciples. What did Jesus do? Jesus mentored them. How? We've seen everything that he did, everything that he taught, both. Right? So uh, they had listened to many teachings from Jesus, but at the same time, they had seen the life of Jesus and they could live out you know, what uh, Jesus had demonstrated through his own life. So he prepared these apostles 
who he had chosen he had given them commands uh, and it is also said through the holy spirit so we know that there is this um, uh, uh, you know help or support that each person of the godhead gives to the other so the ministry of jesus supported by the holy spirit through the holy spirit he gave commands to the apostles who were chosen to whom uh, he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs so we see in scripture that the lord jesus made himself visible to the disciples so that they know that he has risen from the dead jesus dying on the cross was very real to the disciples and we know it's a historical record because uh, all these writers matthew mark luke uh, john they talk about it these are all separate individuals we also have extra biblical literature that proves that the trial the death the burial of jesus was a historic event now in addition to these events there is another event that is being spoken of which is the resurrection of the lord jesus now jesus wanted the disciples to witness all of these they saw him die but they also saw him come alive uh, he he appeared to them in the resurrected body and he uh, continued to be with them after his resurrection so what uh, you know 40 days he was with uh, the people he was with the disciples and they again heard him they again uh, lived with him and experienced him uh, and they were very clear that you know jesus uh, uh, was alive and it was the same jesus so there are infallible proofs uh, luke writes what are all these infallible proofs so for 40 days there are many things that took place as jesus was with the people it is uh, noted in first corinthians 15 and verse 6 uh, you know we we are told that about 500 brethren at once paul writes about this 500 brethren or, or people they saw jesus okay? or, or they saw the resurrected jesus so it's not that only the disciples are talking about the resurrected jesus there were other people who have witnessed the resurrected christ and so if 500 people saw jesus and he was uh, among them for 40 days there would have been so many things that he said and did which was proof enough for them to know that yes this jesus has risen from the dead did he really die uh, was he really nailed to the cross well uh, you you remember the time when thomas was doubtful and he said okay uh, tell me i i want to know lord is it really you and he showed him the wound that he had in his hand to prove that look hey it's me i died but i am alive now i am risen in the midst of all of you so in this way jesus gave witness to uh, you know his resurrected self and infallible proofs many infallible proofs so many things have happened uh, that uh, may not necessarily be ha have been recorded for us uh, in you know the the letters here but uh, many things have taken place as people witness the resurrected christ okay so i i think i'll just stop here and then we will continue later so so far we've seen luke's continuation he's writing to theophilus he's talking about the resurrected christ he's talking about how jesus presented himself alive uh, and and uh, you know for 40 days he was with the people and he was talking uh, it also states here towards the end uh, of verse 3 that he was speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of god so again another big lesson for us look at the teaching of jesus before he uh, died he was talking about the kingdom of god after he came alive he hasn't changed his teaching isn't it so jesus is focused on the same teaching yes there was uh, you know depth uh, maybe depth is added to what has already been spoken of but jesus does not deviate from the core message of the kingdom of god so uh, unless it was important for jesus think about this only 40 days he's with the people uh, he can talk about anything that's important to him what is important to him 
the kingdom of God. So he spoke to them pertaining to the things of the kingdom of God. Okay, so uh, all right, class, let's go in for a break. We will come back and we will continue in the book of Acts. Uh, thank you so much.